Let's take our Bibles, please, and turn to the book of Hebrews again. We're in a series right now uh, regarding this uh, theme, Look Unto Jesus, Looking Unto Jesus, and we're going to kind of drive that home today. And uh, I uh, was, was thinking about, you know, when you get your record stuck, that's intentional here. We, we try to pray about our theme. We feel like that 2024 is a year that we need to really not just talk about it, but we need to look unto Jesus, our author and finisher of our faith. We've got to look to him, listen now, every single day as we carry our cross. And I appreciate so much that particular uh, song and some of the wording in it. And uh, I just, uh, I want uh, all of us to be ready to meet the Lord. If he comes back this year, that we'd be ready to meet him. We'd be born again, know we're saved, have our lives cleaned up, ready to see our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And how many believe he is coming again? And we don't know the day or the hour, and uh, we ought to always be ready. I was reading just an old, real old commentary this, this past week regarding that particular subject. And this guy said, he was writing like in the 1800s, he said that uh, uh, even in the apostles' time, they were looking for Jesus to come back. And then he said this, every successive generation of Christians have always been looking for Jesus to come back. And uh, don't ever let that get old. Uh, if Peter and James and John and Paul could all look for Christ to come back in their day, you and I should so much the more be looking for Christ to come back in our day. And here we are this far into 2024. Can you believe we're almost through January? I feel like we're running through it. Uh, you can tell I don't run anywhere. I, I hobble, drag body parts around when I go. And uh, we had our ladies meeting just uh, about a week or so ago. I told them, I said, uh, this one lady was, was uh, she named her dog five miles. That way she could tell everybody at work uh, every day she'd walk five miles. <laughs> and uh, that's, how, that's how I feel someday. I need to get me a dog. I heard of one pastor <clears throat> who was always just, uh, he, he was delinquent on knocking on doors and visiting. And so he bought a boat, and he was out on that boat a long time. You know how they named their boats? He named his the Visitation. And they asked him, they said, well, where have you been? He said, I've been out on visitation. <laughs> Let's stand together, please, read him God's Word. And uh, I hope that uh, you, uh, you can walk five miles. That would be great. If you do, call me and tell about it. Or put it on Instagram or whatever you do with a cup of coffee, and that would be great as well. Let's, uh, let's read down through verse number three, and uh, I will take a text together to read together in just a moment. But um, again, uh, when you find the word wherefore, it's referring back to chapter 11, and I trust that you have already been studying these chapters. Wherefore, seeing we also are encompassed about with so great a cloud of witnesses, let us lay aside every weight and the sin which doth so easily beset us, and let us run with patience the race that is set before us. They were just singing about that just a moment ago. And here's how we're to do that, looking unto Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross, despising the shame, and is set down at the right hand of the throne of God. I want you to notice that phrase, he endured the cross. He endured the cross. Verse 3, for considering him, for consider him that endured such contradiction of sinners against himself, lest ye be wearied and faint in your minds. I mean, I see a lot of people are living right there in verse 3 in their race to heaven. I like to read verse number 3 as our text verse. I'd like for you to read that with me together out loud. Verse 3, let's read. Ready? For consider him that endured such contradiction of sinners against himself, lest ye be wearied and faint in your minds. I want to speak on this subject, considering that word endured used twice here, and that is this, continue the race. Continue the race. Ladies and gentlemen, you and I are going to have to toughen up. We've got a race ahead of us. We've got to finish that race. And I'm not just going to flap my wings at this. I'm going to show you five ways that we can continue. I'll show you that straight from the Scripture today. And let's pray. Father, we ask for your help, please, in the power of thy Holy Spirit. 
And we thank you for the wonderful race we're in and for the grandstand effect in heaven of those that are watching us run the race. We thank you for those we rub elbows with in the race as we run along and as we encourage each other and edify each other. Uh, then sometimes we're discouraged about those who are struggling in the race. And I pray we can help those today. And then, Lord, for those who have fallen by the wayside, I pray we'll pray for those. But may all of us today be resolved that they're going to continue the race looking unto you, we pray in Jesus' name, amen. Thank you, you may be seated. It's uh, themes like this that kind of give a watershed effect. You know, you, our theme this year, looking unto Jesus, uh, we're going to go for several weeks here and kind of string off of that in many areas. So don't get tired of turning to Hebrews chapter 12. If you're in an adult Sunday school class right now, you're, you're reading and studying these verses at, in depth, and you're, you're actually getting that watershed effect. They're actually branches from the trees, uh, the, the, the trunk of the tree, looking unto Jesus, and different ways we can do that. But the idea is to build a resiliency in us that makes us intentionally strong in the Lord as we look to Him, and not to mankind or not to some device or creed, but we look unto the Lord Jesus Christ to get us to heaven. How many understand that he is the only way we're going to get to heaven through Jesus Christ? And so this morning we consider this idea of continuing the race. And you know, as we think about the racetrack of life, you'll find it's littered with casualties. People that for whatever reason just did not make it across the finish line of their faith. It's always sad. I can tell you where it started according to our text today. It started in their minds, the last part of verse number three, he says, lest you be wearied and faint in your minds. And so it starts in our minds and become faint there, questioning things. And then their minds begin to affect the emotions and get a hold of those. And before long, it convinces your body that you're weary in the race of God. And different people throw up their hands for different reasons. Some are weak. And they just give up. And by the way, let me just say that God, once we get saved, God wants us to be in the Word of God and God wants us to be in the house of God so that we can receive the edification we need to run the race of God. You cannot just flippantly get saved and say, okay, now I'm going to heaven and try to get to heaven without the help of the Word of God and, and the people of God. And you and I that are in this church of the living God we should do nothing to discourage those that are running the race, especially young Christians. And so we're to edify one another. But some still become weak and they just give up. Some rebel and turn their back on Jesus Christ at the finish line. Others are led away by false teachers. And that's uh, when we need the help of, of the Word of God and discerning of false teachers and and people that are leading astray. The Bible mentions some of them. Paul, for instance, told the Galatian church, who were listening to the wolves around them and false teachers, he said this in Galatians chapter 5, verse 7, and I quote, Ye did run well, speaking of the race, ye did run well, who hindered you, <clears throat> that ye should not obey the truth. This persuasion cometh not of him that calleth you. A little leaven leaveneth the whole lump. What was he saying? He's saying this teaching that has hindered you and caused you to fall in the race, that didn't come from the one that calls you. That didn't come from Jesus Christ, who is the Word. That didn't come from the one at the end of the finish line, who is the author and finisher of our faith, who, as they were singing a moment ago, is calling you, come on, calling you, come on, let's run the race, come on, let's get this thing done. That didn't come from him. That came from a false teacher. That came from a cult. That came from somebody who thinks they know what God thinks, but never uh, have professed to be a born-again Christian in the first place. And you and I should be careful with the, those types of people. And he says, a little leaven leaveneth the whole lump, speaking of sin uh, in, in the life of somebody that will eventually cause you to become a statistic in the race. Never think that you can run the race of God without the help of the Word of God and God's people, it doesn't work. By the way, let me just say it like this. God's people go to church. Could you say that with me together? God's people go to church. And you and I are not to forsake the assembly of ourselves together, as the manner of some is, the Bible says. 
but exhorting one another. And so much the more as you see the day approaching, so much the more as you see the race ending, you and I should be in church more and more, being edified and setting under sound teaching and preaching of the Word of God. Those people that are hindered run the risk of falling by the wayside. And then uh, there are the Alexander the coppersmiths who felt like it was his job to discourage the Apostle Paul in his race. Others are mentioned, men like Phygelus and Hermogenes, uh, who turned back from following. Uh, Paul talks about those men to young Timothy, along with Demas, who the Bible says forsook the Apostle's work and loved this present world and understand this present world is alluring to many Christians and pulls them away. And by the way, you should be careful of those who are in high places that call themselves a born-again Christian that does not act and live like a born-again Christian. And this world is alluring uh, to Christians. And then there are the not just Demases, but the John Marks who just get weary. And you can't forget De uh, Judas Iscariot who walked along with the other 12 who was influenced by the devil himself and lured away through money. I'm just saying this morning that the American church is uh, strewn with used-to-be faithful uh, runners in the race. There are many who used to keep their eyes on Jesus. There are many who used to believe he was the author and finisher of their faith, but pride has pulled them away or power uh, hungriness has pulled them away, or popularity has pulled them away, or money has got in the way, uh, the root of all evil, or the, the life of leisure has pulled their eye in another direction off the one at the finish line, and now they're completely off course. And these are the ones that used to walk with us and worship with us and serve with us, and we pray for them today. We pray for them. When you think of it, humanity without Christ's pure conversion and the transforming power of the Holy Spirit is a helpless and hopeless lot. But with Christ, who is the author and finisher of our faith, we have all we need to continue in this race all the way to the finish line. I'm going to give you some points in just a moment, but with that thought, I want you to look at chapter 11 and verse number 39, I want, to, want you to see a little three-letter word right here because I don't want you to think that, that I, I'm discouraged about those who don't finish the race, but I, I'm encouraged about the fact that all of them could have finished the race. Look what this says here about those mentioned in Hebrews chapter 11, verse number 39. These all, having obtained a good report through faith, received not the promise, God having provided, provided some better thing for us, that they without us should not be made perfect. And what that means is this. All of these made it without seeing the things that you and I have been able to see. All of these made it, all of these prior to the cross of Jesus Christ, his death and his resurrection, yet they all believed by faith. They looked for a city whose builder and maker was God. They were able to see the invisible. All of them made it without the 66 books of insp inspiration called the Bible that you hold in your hands. All of them made it without the great revivals that you and I have been able to see and experience. They made it. And let me just say this, ladies and gentlemen, anybody that's named by the name of Jesus Christ that is truly converted to Christ Jesus, all of them can make it. Amen. All of them can make it. They have the same Holy Spirit. They have the same Word of God. They have the same opportunity to get through the race. And you and I need to understand that we're in this race together. We ought to edify each other. Here, the Bible says that Jesus endured the cross in the face of everything that was thrown at him. He continued his journey up Calvary's hill and never backed down until he breathed that last final breath, crying, it is finished. In our text this morning, you and I are encouraged to continue in the race. And we should, in order to do so, we must prepare ourselves to endure the race. In Luke chapter 9, verse number 23, the Bible says this. 
And he said unto them, speaking of Jesus, if any man, if any man will come after me, let him deny himself and take up his cross daily and follow me. If you and I are born again and we're in this race and we're following Christ, then we're going to follow him all the way to death or the rapture. And here we have Christ over here. Maybe I should go this way where the cross is. Here we have Christ. He's endured the cross. He's made it to the finish line. And you and I are to take up our cross daily, daily, and follow him. That is speaking very clearly of the Christian race that you and I are in, of this race that we're told right at the very beginning, we better prepare to endure because trouble is on the horizon. Could someone say amen right there? So the Christian life is not a bed of roses. We hear that over and over. And so we're to run this race with patience. We're to run this race with perseverance and discipline. And we're to run this race with purpose in mind that we are continuing the faith of our fathers. Timothy encouraged this, this uh, was encouraged to continue in 2 Timothy chapter 3 by the great apostle. We'll speak about that tonight. But it says this in verse 14, but continue thou, speak to Timothy, but continue thou in the things which thou hast learned and hast been assured of, knowing that of whom thou hast learned them, and that from a child thou hast known the holy scriptures which are able to make thee wise unto salvation through faith, which is in Christ Jesus. And so young Timothy was encouraged by the old apostles saying, now you know what the word of God says, you continue, you endure, you don't stop, you keep on going. The older I get, the more I want to see the work of God continue. The older I get, the more I want to see my family continue continue on with the Lord and my church to continue the course it's a great church and she's been a wonderful church over the years and I want I want to be a great church when Jesus Christ comes back I want that you want that I have grandkids right now that's watching their old Paul Paul run the race and I want to finish my race strong I have prepared to finish my race strong. I'm not talking about my physical ability. I'm talking about my heart. I still believe the same things that I was taught in the home, a boy growing up. And I confirmed as a young man was true that Jesus Christ did die for my sins. He was buried. He did rise from the grave the third day. And he's coming again, that same Jesus. And I want to see those things continue. And you should want to see that continue. I want to see my grandson, uh, how God uses uh, Braxton Michael Norris, kind of has a flow to it, doesn't it? Braxton Michael Norris. James Michael Norris. Anyway, beautiful, beautiful. Then, uh, by the way, Michael means likened to God. Anyway, I thought you need to know that today. But, uh, but I, I want to see, I want to see that continue. And all of us should want to see our children continue on for the Lord. Well, let me tell you what, how that's going to happen. You better continue. You better stay. Now is not the time to waver, and now is not the time to be weary, and now is not the time to faint. Now is the time to be strong, looking unto Jesus. We see homes and the family unit failing. We're watching our beloved nation fall apart, churches changing courses, and some closing their doors. But Jesus gave a, a promise to the church that the gates of hell should not prevail against her. And everyone in this room this morning should want things to continue. Steady as she goes. Running the race as we all look to Jesus. You say, preacher, boy, that's just good. That gets me fired up. How am I going to do it? I want you to take your pencil out. I want you to write down five things, and we're going to chase a word through the Bible. This word continue through the Bible. The word endure means that you have prepared, that you have planned how you're going to get through the end of the race. I don't have time to go into all the details about that. I'm not a racing person myself, but I would tell you that it takes a whole lot of planning to do that. I want you to write these down. They're very simple, but I don't want you to ever forget them. Number one, 
How am I going to finish strong and continue the race? Number one, you're going to have to continue in the Word. Would you write that down? Continue in the Word. The Bible literally says this in John chapter 8, verse 31. Then Jesus said to those Jews which believed on him, If you continue in my word, then are ye my disciples indeed. And ye shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. Ladies and gentlemen, the only way you and I are going to get through 2024 and the years beyond is we're going to have to be committed to the word of God and continue. You will not finish strong in this race if you are not spending time in the Bible. Now, we can give you tools, we can give you sermon outline, pieces of paper, and all of that, and give you devotional guides and growth tools and all those things. But somewhere along the line, you've got to say in your heart of hearts, I'm going to sit down every day and spend my time in the Word of God. One of our men just showed me in the prayer room today and uh, talking about how do you get through your day. He came in and he pulled up his calendar for the day. He said, I'm going to show you how I get through my day with all the slop I have to endure. Right here at 2.30, I block off my schedule. No one's out in my office. I'm in the Word of God. I don't care if it's 2.30, 10.30, 5.30. I don't care if it's before you go to bed. You better have a time in the Word of God. You forsake the Word of God. You are all but washed up. That's an old-fashioned West Virginia word. I could have said washed up, but I felt like I ought to use the R right there. (laughs) Jesus endured his course and his cross because he was the word. And everything he did in his life was conformed to that word. He was bound to the word of God. Number one, you're going to make it in this race. I'm going to hurry now. Number one, you got to continue the Lord. Number two, how am I going to make it in this race? What if uh, <coughs> the stock market uh, fails? What if <coughs> the, uh, uh, the, the banks close? What if uh, uh, we, we can't get any food? What if, I, and by the way, I don't know about any of those things. I know that a lot of people like to scare a, lot, a whole lot of people. I don't know what's going to happen. You don't know what's going to happen, but I can tell you this one thing. When I get to the end of 2024, if I'm still alive and the rapture hasn't occurred, I can tell you one thing, I've committed to continue my race. Amen. Number two, write this down. Continue in love. How are we going to do this? How are we going to finish? Well, don't, don't try to move on with getting mad at everybody. You've got to continue in love. Continue. The Bible literally says this. John 15, 9. Look at the verse. As the Father hath loved me, so have I loved you. Continue ye in my love. Not the world's love. By the way, stop letting the world tell you how to love other people. We learn what love is through God and through His Son, Jesus Christ. By the way, isn't it a wonderful thing to be loved by God eternally? He goes on to say, well, not study the chapter, but chapter 15 goes on to say that uh, we show our love for God by keeping His commandments. We just talked about the Word, and if I'm going to continue, if I'm going to continue this year in my race, I've got to continue in love, and the way that I show my love to Christ is I keep His commandments, and don't, don't, don't go around telling everybody, well, I love Jesus, and I love Jesus, and you break most of His commandments. Do you want to name 10 of them? How many of us want to flunk the first service? Are you keeping the commandments of God? Understand if you're keeping the commandments of God, you're showing Jesus Christ you love him. It goes on to talk about in the same chapter, chapter 15, that how we show our love uh, to God is also by loving the brethren. Are there any brethren that you hate? Are you are you one of those cranky people that just, just have, has the gift of discouragement like Alexander the coppersmith and some of these people? I mean, you and I are to love the brethren. I'm not saying you got to send everyone a Christmas card every, every year or just give them a big old hug in the Lord, but I'm saying you ought to love the brethren. And uh, so how we're going to get through, there's going to come a day and I hope it's after I'm in heaven, but there's going to come a day when you're going to understand just how much we need each other. Amen. And not this, just this church, but other churches that believe like us. Amen. You're going to see.
stop shooting the people that's on the same team with you. And so we're going to do this by continuing love, by continuing the Word. Let's follow the words of the Bible. Number three, write this down, continue in grace. How am, I going to, how am I going to continue in this race? Continue, number three, continue in grace. Acts chapter 13, verse 43. The Bible says, many of the Jews and religious proselytes followed Paul and Barnabas, who speaking to them, persuaded them, to continue in the grace of God. Grace starts at salvation. Saving grace. All of us are saved by grace through faith. <clears throat> God doesn't want us to ever forget that, but he was saying much more than that. So you got these, these Jewish people that had walked away from Judaism, and you've got these other religious proselytes that were, had been followers of other faiths, now they're born again, <coughs> and he said, here's how you're going to get through this thing. Paul and Barnabas says, you're going to have to understand you've got to continue in this grace of God that we're preaching. It starts at salvation, but then it continues through living a life of grace, and then it continues all the way to not just saving grace and living grace in a graceful way, as Christ would in Christ's likeness, speaking of your growth, but then we're going to have what's called dying grace. And you and I have not experienced dying grace, but the day will come that you know the lights are about to go out, and they're going to come on in another place. And you're not going to forget the day that you got saved. And you're going to remember that Jesus said, I'm going to take away the sting of death. And you're going to remember that he's going to come and get you, absent from the body, praise of the Lord. And you're going to begin to experience something that only those in their last days, last hours experience. That is called dying grace. They sing the old song, Grace to Cross the River. There'll be new grace when it's my time to go. And I thank God for that new grace. And I thank God for the times that I've been in the room of that dying saint of God that breathes her last breath and breathes celestial air on the other side. And God will give you that kind of grace from the time that you're born again all the way through your life until the time you die if you'll look unto Jesus. We talk about enduring and growing and making preparation for that to happen. We have continuing in the Word and continuing in love. And I'm going to continue in grace, as believers were to show grace and deference to those in the church that we worship in. Number four, I found this word, continue in faith. I should say continue in the faith is how it's pronounced in Scripture. Acts chapter 14, verse 22, if you look at the verse there, confirming the souls of the disciples and exhorting them to continue in the faith that we must, through much tribulation, enter the kingdom of God. And if Paul would say that to those in his day, it's much greater in our day. Again, the phrase there, if you're looking at the text, the phrase found there, the faith, the faith, is speaking of the system of beliefs found in the Word of God. How many have a Bible? Hold it up. Hold it up, right? You've got a Bible. Hold it up. We're a Bible-toting church right here. Good. Or your device. Some of you held up your phone. God bless you. <laughs> I'm, I'm so, excuse me. I, and that's fine. I'm glad you did. I read on mine this past week, so everybody should be comforted there. But uh, I tell you what, we could sing Kumbaya here in a while, and you could turn the flashlight on and wave it, and we could... <laughs> Exhorting them to continue the faith is speaking of that citadel of beliefs that you and I hold dearly. You and I are able to study the Word of God and learn the great doctrines of Scripture. This is how we stand. This is how we continue as we learn the beliefs of the Word of God. We, as a church, rally around the faith that we all have in common. You come to a church like this for a reason, because you believe what we believe about the Bible. Could it get a little hello or amen or anything like that? 
I, I'm not saying there may be some things you could take or leave, but, but by, by and large, that's what we do. We adhere to in our statement of faith. When that happens, we become a mighty tool in the hand of Almighty God. And over the years, I think we've seen that happen. We've continued in that. Continue. Lastly, if you'll jot this down, continue in prayer. Continue in prayer. Very precious verse found in Colossians chapter 4, verse 2. Continue in prayer and watch in the same with thanksgiving. A preacher, how can I make preparation? How can I endure? Life's hard. I, I, I'm tired. I'm, I'm weary. I've got these questions in my mind, and I've been watching this, this one blog about the Bible, and I just, excuse me, no, cease with the blogs. I got this YouTube channel, I'm, and it's, it's, I got all these things, you know, I just, everything's just so mixed up, or I've been watching CNN, MSNBC, and, and I'm all whacked out, and you should be. <clears throat> We're supposed to be looking unto Jesus. And one of the ways that we can prepare to endure to get all the way to the finish line is develop a life of prayer. Continue in prayer. Continue in prayer. Jesus himself said this in Luke 18, 1, and he spake a parable unto them to this end, that men ought always to pray and not faint. And of all the things that I've mentioned, this could be the greatest tool that the devil uses in the life of Christians that is a prayerless church, a prayerless home, a prayerless marriage. Friend, I'm not talking about whispering a prayer in the morning. I'm talking about do you know what it means to go to your place of prayer and fall on your face before God and get something from Him? We don't need one, ten, twenty people like that in this church. We need 500, 600, 1,000. The gates of hell shall not prevail against that. So God wants us to continue, He wants us to endure. I want to show you this verse one more time. Look at verse number three. Let's read it out loud together. Verse number three, ready? For consider him that endured such contradiction of sinners against himself, lest ye be wearied and faint in your minds. In other words, if you don't consider this one thing about the Lord, many things, but this one thing, you are going to be wearied and you're going to be faint. And you're going to become a casual if you don't dig out of that. What was he talking about? I want you to circle this word, contradiction. Jesus endured the contradiction of sinners against himself. You go back and read the life of Christ. I'm going through Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John right now and comparing different things. But they hated him. Oh, they vehemently hated Jesus Christ. They'd holler things out at him and they'll, they'd pick up rocks and throw them at him and the idea was to kill him and Jesus would always slip out of their sight. But they finally got him. They lied about him. Rose up false prophets to, and false testifiers to lie about him. And then they began to contradict him. If you're the son of God, prove you're the son of God. Pilate contradicted him. The high priest contradicted him, should have known better. If he'd read his Bible, he would have known that that was the Messiah. And then when they got him to the cross, they hollered, I said, Thou be the Son of God, bring thyself down. <laughs> he couldn't a bit more come down from that cross. He went to that cross. It was prophesied he'd go to that cross. He was doing what God had called him to do for me and you. They drove the nails in his hands. They placed the crown of thorns uh, upon his head. They, they put the robe of purple on his back, and they mocked him, and 
They gave him reeds for a scepter. They contradicted him. And I don't know where you're at in your life. Maybe you've been hurt somewhere along the way by another believer. Or maybe a relationship has gone sour. It's really messed you up. And you've made some promises to yourself that I'll never forget this. I'll never give this up. I'll never whatever. Or maybe uh, you've had financial setback or some type of hardship. Or maybe you have strayed in some way and you followed another avenue and you've got off course and maybe you're involved in some sin even right now but I want you to know something if you're a child of God he's still at that finish line he's calling you come on come on or like my daddy would say him come on that's for the fellow that was going the wrong way (laughs) rest of us he's patiently earnestly calling come home come on and today I want to challenge you to get off your high horse get off your agenda of what you think the Christian life is all about and get back to looking unto Jesus how am I going to do that continue in the word of God continue in loving God and your brethren continue in the grace of God and the graces of what we have learned about Jesus Christ and continue in the faith once delivered and begin to contend in the faith like uh, Jude told all of us. And then get back to your place of prayer, begging God and asking him, dear God, I want to continue. I want my church to continue. I want my family to continue. I want my marriage to continue. I want my nation to continue. Dear God, get us out of this clown show we're in and get America back on track and back to its roots. One more time, let's stand together.